So now you know what is synchronous speed or in simple words, stator speed. But as we said in a few minutes ago, the rotating part of the motor is the rotor and the speed of the rotor, NR is not exactly equal to the speed of the stator winding. Why is it and how it rotates? It is the slip. Assume you put a closed conductor inside a rotating magnetic field, RMF. What would be happened? According to the Faraday's law, a varying magnetic field produces an electromagnetic force, EMF where the EMF produces a current, here in the closed conductor, loop. Do you remember the incident that happened when a current carrying loop situated in a magnetic field? According to the Lorentz force law, we are able to observe that an electromagnetic force, EMF is produced on the loop making the loop to rotate. Rotor of an induction motor does the same activity as the loop in the magnetic field. Instead of the loop, rotor has the conductors or sometimes called as conductor bars to carry the current induced by the EMF. If we find the synchronous speed in RPM for our usual domestic power supply which has the peak voltage of 230 VAC, with the frequency of 50 Hz, we are able to determine for a two-pole stator, it's 3000 revolutions per minute. Hence 3000 revolutions per minute is the maximum speed the motor can hold up and the speed of the rotor will be less than synchronous speed due to the slip which is equal to the ratio between the speed difference of synchronous speed and the rotor speed with the synchronous speed. NS minus NR divided by NS percent. Now I hope I have able to refresh your memory in a few minutes to prepare for our lesson. Part number one. Mathematically, construct the motor. An electrical motor is a device that converts electrical energy to mechanical energy. Electrical motor is one of the biggest advancements in the fields of engineering and technology. It's because of motors, life is what it is today in the 21st century. Without motor we had still been living in Sir Thomas Edison's era where the only purpose of electricity would have been to glow bulbs. Now please give your attention to the parts of an induction motor as shown in this figure. If I start from the right hand side, fan cover. Fan, motor case, stator, rotor, flange bracket. Make sure that these are just the main components of a single phase induction motor where there are more subcomponents inside. Motors are classified into the following ways. See the flow shown here. Mainly there are three motor types, DC, AC and special. Under AC there are two types, synchronous and asynchronous. Induction or the asynchronous motor has two modes. Single phase and three phases. According to Faraday's law an EMF induced in any circuit is due to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage through the circuit. As the rotor winding in an induction motor is either closed through an external resistance or directly shorted by ending, and cut the stator rotating magnetic field, an EMF is induced in the rotor copper bar and due to this EMF, a current flows through the rotor conductor. Here the relative speed between the rotating flux and static rotor conductor is the cause of current generation. Hence as per the Lenz's law the rotor will rotate in the same direction to reduce the cause example, the relative velocity. The single phase motor is not self-starting and hence needs an auxiliary means or equipment to start the single phase induction motor. Mechanical methods are impractical and, therefore the motor is started temporarily converting it into two-phase motor. Single-phase induction motors are usually classified according to the auxiliary means used to start the motor. They are mainly classified according to the starting methods. Split phase. Capacitor start. Permanent split capacitor. Capacitor start and capacitor run and there is one more starting method which is not that common called shaded pole. The induction motor runs at two main conditions. One is at no loaded condition where the output power is not being connected to a mechanical load. Two is at loaded condition where the output power is connected to a mechanical load such as fluid, belt etc. In this design we are going to make the PSC or permanent split capacitor starting method to start up our motor and our designing motor is going to have the following specifications. <laughs> 